Well, hello and welcome to the Psychic Side Radio TV podcast here on the A1R Psychic Radio Network, Moonstruck TV and Lightning TV and other fine places on the internet. Wow, we're everywhere. You know, we're the number one psychic radio network on earth. So that's pretty good. So uh, if you've been looking for us, you found us. I am a psychic medium from Texas. And uh, this is the show that is expressing uh, views that are the psychic side. You know, you hear the skeptics all the time. So, uh, so now we're just going to let you hear our side of things. So we're really happy to be here to, to kind of clear things up and give you permission to work on your psychic abilities because um, we believe that uh, and they're very important. They're, they're uh, really good about uh, helping you develop all of your personality and uh, just being more human you know uh, last week i was at the uh, holistic festival in plano and uh, i did my talk i couldn't believe how many people showed up so someone must be listening to the program because uh, the uh, the house was packed so i'm really happy about that so today i'm going to start our program off uh, talking a little bit about uh, a topic that i know it's going to give you chills okay just going to give you chills down your spine and um uh, it's uh it's the uh, what, what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about the third house of the zodiac so see i told you um you got chills but uh this house is the house that is everything about the sign of gemini and being june that's that's the time for gemini and uh, it is the house that is naturally ruled by the planet Mercury. And it has several uh, characteristics that are relevant uh, to today's uh, issues that are going on because it's playing a large role in our country, in the United States at the moment, uh, because um, there are planets that are in the third house of the United States that are just uh, highlighting a few things that uh, we should be aware of. and. Uh, and I, I, I'm doing this because I want I want you to learn how to use your own chart and learn how to use the transits in your chart. You know, everybody reads the horoscopes and everything like that, but I mean, they're just, they're just too general. But, but when you get specific and you learn about different issues that are going on in, in your life and in your natal chart, the transits, it's fascinating. It's just plain fascinating. So. So um, this particular house is the uh, first mutable house of the Zodiac. So what that means is it means that it is uh, the house where things start to change or evolve. Um, the first house, for instance, is about acting, about action. The second house is about staying firm. But the third house is about being mutable, being changeable. As you know, sometimes when you take action or you, you stay steadfast, uh, you can take too much action and you may need to make a change. Uh, if you are too fixed uh, and things don't work out, you also need to make a change. So the third house kind of rectifies the what's going on in the first and second house. It gives you a little bit different perspective of things. And uh, that's what's so, what's so uh, cool in my mind about the Zodiac because Everything is a reaction to something previous, and uh, it's uh, it, it's 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 just it's really interesting. So the third house kind of takes a middle ground between the first house and the second house, and um, and in the scheme of things, this is the house of negotiations. It is the house of the sibling, the uh, the uh, uh, first person you negotiate with as an equal is your twin or or a sibling. Uh, other areas associated with Gemini are early childhood, elementary school education, short stories, communication, being talkative, and changeability. Do any of these sounds a little bit so familiar? You know, we're, we're talking a little bit about uh, transgenderism these days. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, early public education, about how things are changing there and how people are trying to sort out issues. Uh, because, you know, these are, these are important things, but, but uh, just a few years ago, you might not have been hearing about them. You just uh, didn't hear a lot about uh, 
uh, early childhood education and uh, critical race theory and and other things like that, the, the discussing pronouns, uh, all of those things. I'm not passing judgment on. I'm just saying that these are issues that are all third house issues. They're all third house, and um, and you know, it's interesting too because we're starting to see presidential candidates emerge who are all um, part of a, a mutable sign, either Gemini, Virgo. Gemini's and Virgos are the ones that are really uh, uh, showing up for, uh, in the presidential election uh, that's coming up. And of course, uh, today we had our uh, second Gemini president who was uh, indicted. And, uh, and so very much in the news, very much uh, a part of what's going on right now. Uh, and it's something that, that we as astrologers look at, we recognize it, and we just say, okay, we're just sorting some things out right now. And, uh, and so uh, with Mercury being the, uh, the god of communication or the winged messenger, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to look at the, some of the characteristics of this particular uh, entity because Mercury is associated also with very high intelligence. And, uh, and Mercury uh, was the only god that could go from Hades to the Elysian fields. And, uh, and so the people in Hades couldn't stand him. They just hated him uh, because uh, he could leave. He could leave that awful place that they were doomed to eternity to be in because of their misdeeds or whatever else they did. But, uh, you know, Mercury would, would go to uh, uh, the Elysian fields and, and uh, the Elysian fields look at him and they go, who's this rough guy? You know, who's this guy that, that uh, just came from, from the, uh, the, the darkest, uh, most terrible place in the universe? Uh, can we trust him? Uh, is he talking from both sides of his mouth or what? Is he, is what kind of duality does he have? You know, sometimes Geminis get a bad rap because they like to see all sides. They like to see everything. And, uh, and when you do that, you wind up not, not having friends on either side because it doesn't look like you're taking a stand. And, uh, and Mercury likes to figure things out. I mean, Mercury likes to negotiate. Mercury likes to say, oh, you know, that sounds good over here. And that sounds good over there. And maybe we can come to a compromise, you know. But, um, but a lot of times people don't want to do that. And uh, they want to have, have things their way. And uh, if they don't get things their way, then they, they uh, rebel or they get upset. And, and that's why I think uh, they say that uh, when two sides get an agreement and either side is happy, then, uh, then you probably have a good agreement. So uh, this is the way Mercury works. And this is what's uh, important about the third house of the Zodiac. So what's, what's going on in the third house of the United States right now? Well, first of all, the third house of the United States is Pisces, okay? And uh, Saturn, you've heard me say it before, uh, Saturn has entered into the sign of Pisces and it's entered into the, uh, the third house of the United States. Actually, it's about midway through it, you know? So, uh, so we've been having lots of discussion about, um, about transgenderism, about duality, about identity, those sorts of things. And we're just kind of in the middle of trying to figure things out. You know, astrology is not going to give you solutions in your life. Uh, uh, astrology is going to point out areas that need to be looked at. Okay. And, um, and when you are, are sensitive to that, you go, hmm, maybe I'm not following the path I should. And so that's why it's good to work on things and to, to get things kind of sorted out. And that's what we're doing right now. Another planet that I've mentioned previously on our program that's affecting uh, a lot of things is, is Neptune. Uh, Neptune is, uh, is in the final stages of um, being in the third house. It's probably going to be there a little, while, a little while longer because it takes about 12 years or so for um, or 13 years for Neptune to transit a sign or transit a house and uh, so it's still got a little ways to go and Neptune is about illusion so when you have 
illusion in the sign or you have the of the house of communication there's a lot of uh fake news if you want to call it that uh out there and uh and so that's why it's it's important that during these times to kind of take things with a grain of salt not not just be so quick to pass judgment on on people or things or uh uh you know just say okay this is the only way uh because it usually means the person that's doing the communicating may have an agenda so so this is just for you to understand and it's important to know where uh and neptune is in your chart because that's the area where we kind of have some self-deception you see so uh, i know where it is in my chart i'm not telling you where it is but uh, it uh, is an area for you to just pay attention to because it's, uh, it's one of those things that can creep up on you and later on you go, I got con, you know. So, uh, so right now we have to be very careful to what we hear on the news uh, because there's a lot of deception out there. And uh, when we um, are listening to it, we need to think about it. We need to just uh, be very careful and, and, um, and evaluate things on our own terms so this is uh, what i wanted to say about uh, astrology because i feel like it's important to know that uh, as a as a psychic uh, and as a uh, person trying and, and as an astrologer because uh, i need to communicate how things work to my audience to you so that you know so that you can uh, maybe get uh, your natal chart and get a transit done and if you get a transit done on your chart, on your nail chart, then you'll know exactly where things are um, are situated. And you can say, hmm, you know, I, I know I'm having problems communicating with people or I'm having trouble with my siblings uh, and uh, I wanna work that out. So you might be a little more thoughtful about how you deal with, with these particular issues. Or if your children are in an elementary school, you may want to pay attention to what's going on in that elementary school and, and maybe get a little bit more involved, you know. So that could be what be what is uh is being uh told to you by the universe. So uh I'm hoping we get some callers today. I don't see any just yet. Brittany? Oh she has okay I have yes, Brittany. So Brittany, uh where are you calling from today, Brittany? I'm Brittany can you hear me? Yes. Richmond, Virginia? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Brittany, uh, I hear you have children behind you. Is that right? Yes, you sir. Getting them from daycare. You, you, okay. Okay. Brittany, have you been crying lately? Have you been um, upset over maybe. something? I have. You have? Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, is this about a relationship? Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'm sorry you're having some trouble in your relationship. It just seems to me, I, I feel like there needs to be a little bit of a pause right now. Um, I, I just think you've had some misunderstandings with your partner. And um, I feel like uh, I feel like this is going to work itself out. Are you wanting to work things out with, with, with that person? Yes, yeah, I've been with him going on 11 years now. 11 years, you said? Yeah, it'd be 11 years in August. Okay. Uh, has he had some problems with his uh, work? I'm sorry? Has he had problems at his job? Yes, he has. Okay. Well, because it feels like uh, he's uh, under a lot of stress right now, and he may be saying things that he he's probably going to regret. Okay? Because I, I, like, uh, I feel like the two of you are a good couple. I feel like the two of you really should be together, um, but um, I, I feel like, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, it just feels like he gets a little bit overwhelmed and sometimes he, he does some things he shouldn't do. And, uh, and so I hate to ask you to be too patient with him because, you know, he's got some responsibility too, but uh, I, I feel like uh, just kind of taking a pause, just leave him alone a little, little bit. And I think the two of you will, have some uh, conversation, uh, a good conversation to kind of get things resolved. Does that make any sense to you? Because I agree with you. 
Okay, okay. Well, very good. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Um, I actually had put in it. He wanted to um, connect with his mother. I've been trying to find someone to try to connect with his mother. Um, since her passing of January, I haven't. And um, that was another reason why I reached out. Um, okay, that's another okay. reason why that's part of his stress. So. Okay, okay. So he's grieving over the loss of his mother. Is that right? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And so you probably are too. Did you have a good relationship with her? I did have one on and off, but we ended it pretty well. Okay. All right. Well, this is a lady that uh, it just feels like she may have had some problems in her chest. Did she? Did she have some breathing issues or? Uh, did she have, she didn't, I just didn't see her choking. I don't know what's going on here. Kidney failure, heart failure. Oh, in her chest. Okay. So she, she was having some problems, uh, in her chest and, uh, it just, she, what I'm hearing is, is that she knew that it was her time. And, uh, and so she's, she's appreciative of the life that she had. Uh, she just says that, um, she knows that that he's disappointed that that she's gone, uh, but she's still sending her love to him, and uh, and she just says um, it was her time, okay. And uh, I'm not sure there was anything that could have been done to to help her because it was just just her time, her and her heart just failed, okay. So just tell him that that she's around him and that uh, she sends his love to her to him right now. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're you're welcome. Uh, if you want more information, you can contact me on my website, and we can have another formal reading. Um, it's just johncapello.com. We can spend a lot longer time with you uh, in that in that particular setting. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank All right. you so thank much. you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. So I did want to uh, talk a little bit today about um, another topic because I've been trying to work in some mediumship into uh, the discussion on the show. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that uh, when a spirit sh shows up to you, they may show up. Uh, they're they're going to... They're, you just have to pay attention to their to the position uh, where they show up. For instance, if you're reading for another person, um, men usually show up on the right, okay, whereas women will show up on the left, okay. And uh, of course, Brittany wasn't sitting in front of me, so I had to kind of pay attention to uh, who was who was there. Uh, and finally, her mother-in-law showed up. Uh, but, uh, and I'm glad that she did, but the energy that was foremost around Brittany was that of the relationship. And so I had to deal with that, that particular relationship or that energy first. So it's, uh, it's just that, that's just kind of how it works. So, um, we are, um, we have a few more minutes in the program and, uh, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more about the right side of your body, which is masculine and the left side, which is feminine. So if you start to see people that are uh, showing up on the left side of someone or, or maybe their head on, on, uh, on someone's shoulder, it's usually a mom or a grandmother or someone that had a mother, was a mother figure. Uh, a spouse is usually right next to the person uh, that is, uh, that's getting the reading. And, uh, and, and it, a lot of the times it's the proximity of, of how close they are will tell you how good of a relationship they had. So for instance, if you see someone that's way out over here, uh, they may not have been as close uh, to the person that is uh, getting the reading. Uh, and of course, the person who's getting the reading always verifies whether or not the information is correct. Uh, only you can, you have to, but you have to know the signals. You have to know what uh, you're seeing or what you're experiencing to communicate to the, to your client uh, whether or not uh, what's what's exactly going on 
So that's important. Now, it's not just the right and the left that you, you need to be concerned about when uh, you're doing a reading or, or you're getting mediumship. Uh, if you see guides that are just are, are right around the side of a person, uh, those are usually guides, either wisdom guides, uh, joy guides, or otherwise. And then you see angels that are just directly above you or just directly behind you. They can always, they can also be guides as well. They can show up on either side, but you will note them by the way that they present themselves. Uh, sometimes children and animals show up in front. At least that's the way it works with me. And uh, you have to learn the way it works with you. And, uh, and you need to see if there's any patterns or there's any, any other signals that spirits will show you to help identify who they are. Because it's important that they help you out by identifying who they are so you can communicate properly uh, to um, uh, the person that's receiving the, the reading. Because that person has a degree of, of, uh, of skepticism. Uh, when they're going to uh, a medium, and uh, that's natural. So it's, uh, it's, it, it helps you to know the signals that a spirit is giving you so that you can be accurate, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that uh, your client is always going to tell you the truth, because <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes they don't, and later on uh, they, may, they may realize that they didn't, didn't say the truth to you. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's good to know that you uh, got the, the 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 proper signal and, and you communicated it correctly. So um, uh, that's what uh, I I teach and that's what I uh, tell people that want to learn a little bit about mediumship. And you know um, I do things fast uh, when I give a reading, and the reason why I do things fast is because it comes quickly. And uh, if I'm dealing with a room of 30 or 40 people, I like to try to give everybody a reading if I can. And I like to do it within a, 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 like a two hour period or, or a, re a reasonably uh, short period of time because I, I know how I am. I, I get antsy, I can't sit for two hours or so. So um, it's, uh, it's something that I like to give people at least a two or three minute reading if I can, but I like for it to be accurate. So. We, uh, we have a couple minutes left in the program, and so I want to tell you a little bit uh, more about um, uh, how I give readings. I, I give them uh, based on energy that I see around you, and a lot of times uh, people uh, come in and bring in other people, and then a lot of times uh, people will come in, and they uh, one of the first things that they say is how they passed away. Like we noticed the lady's mother, mother-in-law, had problems with her chest, and, uh, and and she had her heart problems. And I was seeing her trying to cough, or I was seeing her trying to breathe, and and, and just having that heavy chest. So, so, uh, so we were accurate in, in that in that particular regard too. Now, since we only have a short time left, I just want to tell you that my next appearance is going to be in Allen, Texas. I'm going to be at the Dallas Yoga Fest this coming Saturday, so be sure to come by and see me and uh, and get your aura picture taken, and maybe a short reading if you like. So I'll be delighted to do that for you. Also, I want to <clears throat> excuse me thank our sponsor uh, Miracles of Joy. Uh, be sure to use their promo code PSO223 and buy a whole bunch of stuff from them. Uh, visit my website if you want a formal reading. Uh, make an appointment on my website. I'll be delighted to give that to you. And like me on my Facebook page because I want to get some feedback from you. I want to be able to know you're listening. And if you have questions, please be sure to uh, send them to me at john at johncapello.com. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Psychic Side on the A1R Psychic Radio Network and Moonstruck TV. So long for now. Bye-bye.